of my Lakota elders, Mitako Yepi, Lila Michante wa Stelo, Wayanki E, Oyate Kile wa Kayelo. My beloved relatives, beloved grandmothers and grandfathers, beloved mothers and fathers, beloved brothers and sisters, beloved sons and daughters, beloved grandchildren. My heart is strong this night, for I have come to be in the presence of a group of people that rank in the world as among the most eminent scientists, the most eminent educators, the most eminent philosophers that we can find today anywhere on the face of Mother Earth. For in every university, in any place of learning, any place in this world, people are beginning to recognize that our songs, our understandings of the universe, our understanding of life given to us by our elders is in fact a truth and an understanding that all humanity will have to come to on this Mother Earth if we're to have the peace and the understanding and the love and the unity that has been promised us throughout the Western Hemisphere in our prophecies. And although it may seem that these present days we are facing are fraught with difficulties, we have been promised as sure as the sun rises every morning that through the power of our elders and through our prayers we have a role to play on this Mother Earth to become among the spiritual leaders of all humanity. So I feel deeply honored to be in your presence this night. And I hope as the days continue you might each see and feel completely, totally within your hearts the respected role and responsibilities you all play in the center of the hoop that is protecting the sacred fire of spiritual truth that is the center and heart of all spiritual societies, of all native societies. You know, when I came, I thought I'd come up here and escape and come and tell some stories on the bloods and pagans. I kind of get away from home. But doggone, as soon as I walked in, who was sitting there but Gilbert Provost? I said, there goes all my pagan stories. And I'll be darned here, I come up right in front of me here, all my good blood relatives. So if you want to hear any good stories about what's happening in the South, you'll have to see me after dinner. Hey. <laughs> you know, as I sat here looking at different people I've met before, thinking about the meaning and significance of this gathering here, a story came to my mind that really illustrates why I shared that you sitting here and, and when you say mitako yepi it also means those in the spiritual world relatives in the spiritual world because they're here too we're just their representatives here on mother earth it reminded me of the story that my uncle Vine Deloria senior shared with me of an old man on the standing rock indian reservation who couldn't speak english very well but he knew very well that when people started using this new word ecology right around the early 70s that they had a new word. So he asked one of his cousins, he said, say Tahashi, he said, what do they mean, he said, this ecology? So my uncle, who had this old man ask him this, began to try to relate it as well as he could in the Lakota language. And he said, well, he said, cousin, he said, you know, he said, they have these places where people go to study about life. He was trying to describe the educational system. He said, sometimes they spend 18 or 20 years there. They go there and he said, they learn how to read. Then they learn how to write about what they read about. And then they learn to talk about what they write about. Now, if you read enough in there, and write enough and talk enough, finally, after 18 or 20 years, he gets a piece of paper that says you're a doctor of life. He said, then he says they put him in these big places. He's trying to, to explain these scientific laboratories. He said, especially the ones, he said, are good writers and good talkers. They put them in there, give them lots of money. 
They spend lots of money in their studying. They say they take Mother Earth and pour it back and forth in these tubes. They got these things, you look way out there, he said. Things that are far away makes them look close. They have these things you look into, and he said, things that are small makes them look big. You know, they've been studying all these years, spent lots and lots of money to find out what this ecology means. He says, do you know what they found out? The old man kind of shook his head. They found out that everything's interrelated. They found out when you pollute the air which all living things breathe, you pollute all living things. They found out when you pollute the water which all living things drink, you pollute all living things. He turned to the old man, he says, what do you think about that? And the old man said, uh-huh. He said, I was wondering when they get around to that. <laughs> So that old man, he was way ahead of those scientists because he had those things which we all possess as native people. First and foremost, I believe, is the power we have in the knowledge to pray. The power of prayer. Because that was the beginning and end of all things and is today in our life. And I know Mr. Wesley, before I got here, gave us a prayer because even they say eating is like a ceremony. The nation is holy and sacred. And we can all know this because we know that the most sacred and most holy and most wondrous ceremony, no matter where we come from on this Mother Earth, is the birth of a child. Because there is no other ceremony as sacred and holy and wondrous as that. Even our sacred bundles and our sacred things represent the holiness of that sacred bundle of life. And if that is so, if that is so, that the most sacred ceremony of all is the birth of a child, then who are we? And what is the making of that ceremony? And why should it be protected so much in the strength and unity of a family? For that's who we are. In a very sacred and holy way, we are that way. So from prayer, we come to the foundation of our life, of unity in relationship. And I think that the most beautiful way that's ever been explained to me, and I don't care how many university books I've looked at, how many people with degrees I've heard. I can always remember the words of my great-grandfather, Frank White Buffalo Man, as we walk along a small stream. And I believe he explained so beautifully and clearly a message that we have to share any place in this Mother Earth. And its message is healing, for it tells the true nature of this life we live in. And he told me this. He said, you know, Taco Jai, he said, grandson. He said, Wakantanka, he said, the Great Spirit has given everybody wisdom. Never forget that. Everybody has a gift to give. Everybody is sacred and holy. He said, some people receive their wisdom and gifts through reading books. He said, that's fine. He said, in your life you read those books. But remember this. Only take from those books those things that bring unity with yourself and unity with others. He said, the other things, he said, leave them behind. But he said, our people and other people who live close to Mother Earth, who pray. We also received our, our wisdom through dreams, through visions, through fasting, and through the ability to see the, see the messages, the lessons, the teachings the Creator has put in every leaf and rock. He said, look at those trees standing there. And I looked and I had absolutely no idea what he was talking about. He said, look at the message. Can you hear the trees talking? And I couldn't hear the trees talk. He said, look at the alder tree standing there. Look at the pine tree standing there. Look at the fir tree standing there. He says, you know, the alder tree doesn't tell the pine tree to move over, or the pine tree doesn't tell the fir tree to move over. He said, each one standing there together with their mouth pressed towards the same Mother Earth, refreshed by the same breeze, warmed by the same sun, with their arms upraised in thanksgiving and prayer, protecting one another. He said, these the ways of our people. And he said, this is the way all people are going to have to be on this Mother Earth. We're going to have peace. 
There was a little stream going by. He said, Takoja, grandson, look at the wisdom in that stream. And again, I looked, and I had no idea what he was talking about. I thought there was a big fish in there or something. The ignorance of our material eyes being blinded. He said, grandson, he's pick up the water. Feel how gently, how lovingly it touches your hands. You know that water goes through deserts, through mountains, through everywhere. But it never turns its back on anybody or anything. He says, you know that water? That water gives life to all living things. But you know that water has great humility. It always seeks the very lowest spot. But you know that water, he says, you can put in any size container. Large ones, small ones, any size container. But that water always retains its integrity. It's always itself. It never talks out of both sides of its mouth. But he says, you know that water has so much power and so much strength and so much knowledge and so much courage and so much patience that even a mountain lies in its path. That water keeps moving and keeps moving and keeps moving until finally that mountain is washed away and is no more. He said, these are the powers we possess. And these are the powers we must manifest if we are to come to our promised destiny.